Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This is uh, Coach Bill with Weight Loss Made Easy Solution. Hope everybody's having a great hot Sunday uh, so far. Uh, it is about two o'clock. Uh, it is uh, so hot outside that that's probably that's why I'm doing the video. I can't go outside and do anything. And so as I was sitting here um, catching up on some of my clients' uh, paperwork. Um, I thought I would get on here today and give you guys a kind of an update on what's going on with our um, with Emily and I's eating plan and how it was so important for us to develop a protocol or a program that works for us. And so this is the, the, the this is the topic today. The topic is uh, how important is it to find a diet program? that fits you. Now, I'm using the word diet because that's what most of you understand, although the protocols uh, that we teach are not a diet, it's an actual lifestyle. It is something you can do for the rest of your life because once you've been doing it for a while, your body gets so accustomed to it, it <laughs> never wants to go off of it. So it pretty much uh, will make you stay on yourself. But anyway, guys, um, those of you that follow me, uh, know that I have a YouTube channel. Uh, if you go to the YouTube channel, type in Bill Mabry, subscribe to it. You'll, there's plenty of videos on there on uh, some of my health videos. Uh, I talk about uh, uh, fasting, intermittent fasting, uh, ketogenic diet or primal eating. I have experiments on there and all kinds of goodies. Uh, also, you can go to my Weight Loss Made Easy Solution Facebook group page. Uh, join that page and you'll get some of my fat recipe. I just uh, uploaded a really, really good fat burning recipe. Uh, baked salmon with uh, dill sauce and the side dish was uh, spinach sauteed in garlic and butter. I served it last night and the people I served it to gave me a thumbs up on it. So I'm sharing it and it is in the downloads in my group site. So you can go in there, take the downloads and try it. I'm, you guys will enjoy it. But guys, um, the bottom line is uh, the biggest mistake most people make is they uh, try to follow somebody else's uh, meal plan or diet plan and that diet plan is customized for them. Uh, you guys understand who follow me? I talk about this. We're all individuals. So my protocols, how I eat, you know, we teach um, uh, primal meals, a ketogenic diet, which is a high fat, moderate protein, very low carb uh, meal plan. We also combine it with intermittent and prolonged fasting along with our hydrogen rich water, <clears throat> which are all uh, uh, have been proved by science to work in all kinds of uh, disease models, uh, taking off that belly fat, the unwanted belly fat or body fat and actually helping to add lean muscle, especially for those of you that are 40 over. And so that's what we, uh, we educate people on how to do that. But each individual person, you guys, I've talked to you about this, are we're not all the same. So my protocol may not work for you. Uh, and when I've been doing this for a few years, we've tried all different protocols. I have different protocols in my uh, magic box for different people to try on them. I have to uh, try different protocols to see which one fits my client the best. That's why <clears throat> I've talked about this before. It's so important to do a blood uh, glucose reading and a blood ketone reading is that will be determined for me what uh, protocols fit best for my clients because certain foods may knock you out of fat burning and and certain foods may uh, spike your insulin up. And so the whole idea is, is we're trying to control uh, the hormones that are causing you to gain that unwanted belly fat or body fat. Um, we're trying to control the uh, hormones that are causing your blood sugar to be high if you're a type 2 diabetic or a pre-diabetic or, or if you've been diagnosed with a fatty liver. <laughs> so we got to find the protocols that work best for you. And so basically the bottom line is it's my job to customize one for you. And that's where your patience and consistency has to come in. So 
I'm not going to be doing all, all the work. You guys got to contribute some of the work too until we find that combination that works best for you. Uh, like I said, I mean, I've been on the uh, meal, uh, primal meal plan or ketogenic diet and uh, combining it with intermittent fasting and prolonged fasting for a few years now. Um, I've, I've found the one that works very well for us. Of course, I'm still playing around with different ones on ourselves. When I see how it works for us, then I will try it on my clients. And most of them don't know what I'm trying. Uh, I would rather not tell them that I, well, I probably should. They're probably watching this video, but I'm using them as guinea pigs also. But anyway, and so um, if you guys have been following me the last month, last six weeks, you know I did a six-week diet down. And then the last week I did a fine-tuning uh, diet down. Uh, I really, really liked that six-week diet down. It really helped both of us, Emily and I, as far as burning off more of our uh, body fat, especially at our age. We're well over 60 now. And uh, helped us add more lean muscle. So those of you that are skeptic that seniors over 60 cannot add lean muscle, um, I proved you wrong. It's not true. And science has also proved it wrong, too. Uh, you just need the right protocols and the right tools to do that. Most of you don't know what they are because you're not working with somebody that specializes in that. But anyway, so the protocol that, uh, that, that Emily and I really like, and I think this might work with a lot of others out there, is that we do alternate day fasting. Uh, I'm not a fan of doing uh, consistent long-term fa uh, fastings, uh, especially for those of you trying to put on some lean muscle. I think everybody uh, at a point in their lifestyle when they're trying to change it during that first 12 weeks eventually need to get into doing some kind of interval strength training uh, because the more lean muscle you add, the faster you're going to be burning that uh, belly fat or body fat or hip fat or leg fat or whatever fat you're trying to burn. You're going to have to eventually get into some kind of uh, alternate day fasting, I mean uh, exercising, which I call interval training. Uh, the cardio, uh, it's, it, cardio is good if you're going to do it moderately three days a week for good heart health, but if you're, if you're really looking to uh, add some lean muscle, you got to stay away from the cardio. Now, going outside hiking three or four days a week is great. Doing, doing uh, cardio outside is great, uh, but don't focus on the on the cardio, it doesn't work, it never works. Science has already proved that. Uh, all you have to do is go to the gym for six to eight, nine months, watch the people that are on the cardio equipment. That's all they do, hour, hour and a half, two hours, and look at the way they look. The, the composition of their body has not changed. That's just how, how it is. So you gotta, you gotta go in there and do some strength, strength training along with your uh, changing the way you, what you eat, the time you eat, and also changing the type of water you're drinking. But what what protocol that I, I Emily I really enjoy, and it's very easy right right now for us because you guys that follow me know I talk a lot about fat adaptation. Emily and I are very rooted in fat adaptation. We are also very rooted in ketone adaptation. Uh, I will explain that in a video this week what what the difference is between uh, ketone fat adapt or ketone adaptation and fat adaptation, what's different about them and why it's important to be anchored in both of those. I'll do a video about that, but we're both very, very rooted in both of those. And so our bodies, our guts are working at 100, well, I can't really guarantee that we're working at 100%, but I can say we're way up there. We're way above the average person, especially our, our age. We're way above uh, most of us that are over 60, and especially for our immune system being uh, boosted up because of the way our life, lifestyle is, which we all know, they talk about it on the media all the time, that those who have strong immune si systems have less issues with the COVID-19. So hint, hint, uh, what do you guys need to do? Okay, so anyway, the protocol that's working for us very, very well and it's very simple to do is the alternate day fasting. So I actually have a uh, non-fasting day. You guys that follow me know it. My non-fasting days are Monday, Wednesdays, and uh, Fridays. 
Uh, and then my fasting days are Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. On my non-fasting days, because of our workout and the way we train, we train always train in a fasted state to get the most benefits, to get the most out of our growth hormones, and to add lean muscle. And so we go to the gym by 10 or 11, and we're done by 12, 12.30, and we have our first meal at eight, 18 hours. Uh, we'll have two solid uh, meals that day. Our first meal is always going to be the high-calorie meal, uh, a lot of good high fat in it. Uh, uh, protein, I'll, I'll, have, uh, I'll have enough protein to uh, help with my protein synthesis because I exercise so hard. And then between um, uh, my first meal and my last meal, I'll have a snack. I may have a fat coffee. Uh, I've been going to coconut cream more often than a uh, heavy creamer. I do like heavy cream every so I may have that a couple times a week, but I also but I also carry in my work my uh, my backpack. I'll carry some macadamia nuts to snack on, and I'll carry um, some beef sticks, grass fed beef sticks to snack on. Now I from one o'clock to or from uh, twelve thirty to six o'clock on my uh, non fasting days. That's my eating window. So if I feel like eating more than that, I can. I don't because I'm. Uh, I'm adequate. I'm eating an adequate amount of fat and protein to be able to add the lean muscle. But most of my uh, fat and, and carbs and calories, all my carbs are coming from veggies. So when I talk about carbs, I'm talking about veggies and salads and things like that. I don't eat uh, starchy foods except for on um, Sundays if if I take my kids out or my grandkids out. So uh, my last meal of the day is going to be. Uh, very, very low carb. So my, my first meal is really going to be around, I don't know, very, I, I, we, we've, a, we've accustomed, our bodies are accustomed to have very, very low carbs. So I'm pretty much having 20 grams per day. That's pretty much on my non-fasting days, I'm having 20 grams or less per day. Uh, so that's just how we've adjusted ourselves. Uh, those of you know that Follow me that uh, some of you health professionals or, or nutritional doctors, whoever, are probably freaking out right now saying, well, you can't, you can't survive on 20 grams a day. Well, that's BS because I have been doing it for quite a few years now. And so you need to go back to your medical books or you need to go to Google and Google glucose genesis. And that will give you your answer on uh, why we're able to only do 20 grams a day. But anyway... So, uh, and then my last meal on my non-fasting day is going to be a uh, very low-carb meal, high good fat, uh, moderate amount of protein, and veggies. Uh, now, you guys got to re remember when you're talking about ve uh, veggies, for example, uh, I did a uh, dish yesterday for my daughter-in-law. It was uh, spinach that I put in, that I mar I sauteed it in garlic and real butter, grass-fed butter. And two cups of that spinach is only eight grams of carbs. <laughs> two cups for us is a lot of food in one sitting. Now I made a new, um, I, I did baked salmon, uh, about eight ounces with a dill uh, sauce to it. I, I actually, it was so good that I got a thumbs up on it. So I actually put it in my uh, recipe book that I give to my clients. And I also put it in my, uh, if you go to my Weight Loss Made Easy Solution Facebook group page, you join it, you go to the downloads section to it, uh, that recipe will be in there. But that whole meal, I only had about eight or nine grams of carbs that whole meal and <laughs> you're stuffed. Remember, when you're eating higher good fats, your body, you're going to be more stuff than, we, than when you're eating high carb foods. Okay, so that's just how because the fat will satisfy you much much longer. High carb foods within two hours, your body, your your insulin is spiked so so high it drops down so fast. Now you're hungry again. You're you're craving carbs. When you're doing a high fat food, you're satisfied for a long time. Like. And I'll give, I'll give you an example of, of that. So that's my, my non-fasting days. My fasting day is what we found out that really works for us. And that's really helped me. You know, I went on that six-week diet down. Then we did a week of our normal alternate day fasting. I found out 
that for us, when we have our last meal at 2 o'clock on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, our energy level the next morning when we go train is sky high. Our strength is sky high. Our recovery is phenomenal. By the time we walk out of the gym, we're fully recovered. We, we have zero uh, hunger waves. We've completely controlled the hormones that are causing hunger. Uh, and we're also escalating our growth hormones at the same time because our last meal was at 2 o'clock. So from 2 o'clock till uh, 12 o'clock the next day, we've had zero calories, none. All I've had is sea salt and water and my black coffee. And so we feel great, okay? And so that is working really well for, for us. Now, uh, I lost, we both lost uh, weight. Uh, it wasn't muscle, because if it was, then my documentation would show me that I will get weaker and weaker and weaker, but absolutely, completely the opposite. If you look at the documentation on my workout forms, I'm actually getting stronger. So that throws that out. I mean, that's for you skeptics out there, uh, that's, that throws it all out. So, our, so those, that weight that we lost was more of the body fat that I'm trying to lose and I'm trying to tone up a little bit more. And how can I tell? Well, yeah, of course I got on the scale because I, it's for my, re, my research. And I did lose, lose weight. But I could tell by my abs. When my abs, because my abs and my love handles are my worst spots and my back are my worst spots. Well, I noticed in my abs at the end of the six weeks and then doing my alternate day fasting a week after it, I noticed my abs were a little more uh, ripped, if that's how you want to say it, which really, really encouraged me because that's, that's where I want to lose more of, that's where I, where I hold on to a lot of body fat. My back is getting much, much better. So, <clears throat> but, so the, the two o'clock is working great for us. So that's going to be, that's going to be our protocol for the rest of the life uh, of our life but I'm you guys that follow me know I'm into research heavily I love researching I love Emily just it freaks her out sometimes because I keep changing up all, all, all the times because I get a, a, a light goes off in my brain I'm, ah, I gotta try this to see how it works on us and let's see how it works on some of my hard losers you know try d different things so uh, for the next two weeks, guys, I'm going to try something. Okay, now I've looked at some research on, on these are seniors. Now I'm looking at some people that are 40 plus that are really trying to add lean muscle, which is going to help to burn off that belly fat uh, on certain areas or the fat that you have. And so what I'm going to do here is there's, there's a fine line. Uh, most people that do that get on the ketogenic diet or intermittent fasting, they screw up all the they screw up about the amount of fat that they have per meal, or they don't eat enough protein, or they may eat too much protein. There's a fine line there, guys. And so when you're trying to add lean muscle when you're 40 plus or 50 plus or 60 plus, there's a fine line there. You got to make sure you're consuming an, a, a, enough fat, but not too much. You got to make sure you're consuming enough protein. Now, when you get up in the 50 and older, you guys have to consume a little more protein than the ones that are 30 or 20. You got to remember that, okay? Because it's just how it's, it's just how age works, okay? So if you're not consuming enough protein, 50 when you're 50 plus, then you aren't going to put the uh, lean muscle on as quickly as you should and you could, okay? And so we, Emily and I, you know, we found that a certain grams, a certain, a certain amount per day works well for us to add lean muscle. How do we know? Well, because you can check my documentation on how I go up in, in weight. Okay? So, now, I want to go to the next level. Okay? I just want to try something for the next two weeks. So this is what I'm going to do. Okay? So on my uh, non-fasting days which is our Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, I'll still do my last meal at 2, two o'clock. My last meal will be at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And so I'm going to have to change my lifestyle to make sure that I'm somewhere where I can have a, a good high-fat 
moderate amount of protein. Now I can go a little higher on my protein because it's hard as I, I train. So I may go uh, eight to 10 ounces. Now I used, to, I used to preach in the past that your body could only simulate so, much, so many grams in a, uh, per sitting of protein. What you don't use will turn into fat. I used to preach that all the time. And it's still in, in effect depending on your activity level, okay? And so because we are 50 plus, we need a little more protein than you young bucks or your young girls need. And so <clears throat> I may go as high 8 to 10 to 12 ounces per city. I've never had an issue in the past. I, you know, most of the time what happens if you go too high on protein per sitting, it will cause an insulin spike. Well, because Emily and I check our glucose and our ketones regularly because we do research on ourselves so much, that doesn't hold true to us. And that doesn't hold true to a lot of my clients that I, mo I monitor by doing those blood tests, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the gym a little bit early. Say I'm gonna go to the gym about nine. I'm gonna make sure I still train in a fasted state. So I'm gonna go to the gym around nine, work out, my workouts last about an hour. I get home hour, about a half hour after I'm training. I'll, um, I will, I will break my fast like I normally do with my uh, homemade kefir, uh, one scoop of, of the, uh, vanilla collagen with nine grams of protein and one tablespoon of chia seed to give me the um, fiber that I need for that day and to uh, add a little bit more protein. And then <clears throat> I'll have a half hour af after that, I'll actually have a moderate amount of some kind of lean protein, uh, maybe a protein, uh, my protein pudding I like to do, or a protein smoothie. Okay, so that'll be my first meal. Then at two o'clock will be my last meal. Okay, so I'll have a, uh, a, I'll have a great, I'll have a good amount of good dietary fat, make sure I have enough fat. I'll have my six, eight to 10 ounces of pro protein, but I'm gonna keep my carbs still around 10 grams. I'm going to try to stay as close to 10 grams. I may bump it to 15 if, if I do, but I'm going to stay as close to 10 grams. So what I'm going to do is on Tuesdays, Thursdays, uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, I'll probably end up only having 15 grams of protein that whole, I mean, the 15 grams of carbs that whole day, okay? So I'm going to do that uh, for two weeks. I, and I, I just started today doing it. This is sun, Sunday. Uh, we had church at 8. We were out by 9, 9.30. We don't exercise on su Sundays. Um, I called my uh, grandkids up and my daughter and uh, invited them to bre breakfast. So we ate around 10.30, 11.30, 30, And I had uh, a good amount of calories for bre breakfast. My, that, that morning breakfast was a little more food than I normally eat. But we were out with the fa family, and it was okay. And so I, I, I told Emily, I said, okay, this will be our first meal. And then around 2 o'clock, we'll have our last meal. And just before I did this video, I looked at my computer, and it's like now. It's 2.37, and I haven't eaten yet, and I'm full. So am I going to force myself to eat? Absolutely not. I'm way too full because I had a lot of good high fat at that breakfast I had, and I had a, a good amount of protein also, and I also had a couple slices of sourdough toast, which is a, a low glycemic bread, which won't spike my insulin, but will raise my insulin above my normal level. I'm just too full, so I'm not gonna eat. So I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, fast the rest of the day until tomorrow around noon, I'll have my first main meal. So I'll just, I'm just gonna have, I'm gonna have uh, uh, probably uh, sea salt two or three times between now and before I go to bed. I'll have my apple cider vinegar just before I go to bed. And uh, I'll have my black, I'll have a, probably a couple of uh, black cups of black coffee. So th that is the protocol. So that's what we're gonna be doing for a couple weeks. Um, I just wanna see how it affects my uh, strength. I want to see uh, 
how I feel, and I want to see if my body set weight, my right now my body set weight is staying between 176 and 177, pops up to 188, or uh, 178 if I'm retaining water. But I, my body set weight has dropped since I did that six week diet down, and it's been staying down in the lower range. I still have some body fat I want to get off my hips. I still have some body fat I want to get uh, off my abs. And I still have some body fat I want to get off my back. So I'm not done yet. And so hopefully by adding a little bit more calories, I want to see by adding a little bit more calories to my um, fasting days before my last meal, if that will boost my uh, uh, adding lean muscle. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. So guys, that's uh, that's what my plans are for the next two two weeks. Um, like I said, uh, it's very important you find a, a meal plan protocol, a diet down protocol program that works best for your lifestyle. If it doesn't work for your lifestyle, you're going to fail. Most of you will fail. So it has to work for your lifestyle, but it has to be oriented around uh, balancing certain hormones that are causing you to gain that belly fat or is causing you to have those hunger waves or it's causing you to add body fat. You got to know how to balance all that. So if you're interested and you want to know more about our online personal coaching business, uh, you can message me. I'll give you the information. Also, you guys can go to my uh, Facebook group page, join it, Weight Loss Made Easy Sol Solution. There'll be, there's examples of some of the fat uh, burning recipes that we do for a, a, main, a main meal. So guys, I hope you saw some value in this. Uh, be looking for my next uh, video, which will be explaining the difference between ketone adaptation and fat adaptation. Okay, you guys have a great Sunday. We'll see you on the next video. Bye.